What is up guys, Andrew with No Excuses TV here, back in the Tiger Moth to tell you how to make sure it's ready for winter. So to be 100% honest, I'm not going to completely winterize my Tiger Moth this winter. Probably any winter. For a couple reasons. One, we plan on continuing to use it in the winter. Um, act, winter is probably actually one of my more favorite times to go camping just because there's less people out. Um, you get to see a lot of stuff you don't normally see during the summer uh, just because I, I can get I like being a little more active in the winter because I don't have to worry about being overheated and getting too hot. You do have to worry about the water issue and it not freezing, but where we all plan on going, it's not going to be that big of an issue to keep it winterized. Another reason, other than the fact that I will be using it, and we'll use it all, all winter, is that in our climate where we live in Arkansas, it doesn't really get that cold. Now, <laughs> I say that last year it got down to negative 15 a couple days, so unless that happens, we're not going to be too worried about it. And even more so, the Tiger Moth doesn't have any plumbing. There's no water stuff that we have to worry about. The big thing we have to worry about keeping it uh, up to check is just making sure all the seals are there and making sure our electrical is taken care of. So we're going to walk you through everything, first starting on the exterior stuff and then talking about all the interior things you need to do. So the biggest things on the exterior of your Tiger Moth that you need to worry about is make sure you have all your vents closed, make sure you have all your windows closed. With the electrical, you have that shore power that it's unplugged. I am going to go ahead and take my propane off, store it inside. I usually I usually do that a lot anyway when I'm at home or when I have it basically back where I'm gonna be for a while. Just take it inside, make sure everything's locked up. I'm also going to go through and wash my entire Tiger Moth. I, I typically will do that anyway um, after I get done traveling. Like just when I get back from my trip, my camping trip, I'll go through and I'll wash it. I'll go and uh, sweep everything off the roof. Uh, check for sealant sealant issues. So I do have one with my Tiger Moth right now. Uh, I haven't had an opportunity to take it to an RV kind of service shop yet. Um, I do have a leak on, uh, and I've had it since I've bought it. So ever since the get go, we've had a leak in it. Just have to get that fixed. Um, making sure everything that you're going to be your, all your towing stuff is re put up, ready to go. Your seven pin, um, your little safety release, all of your stuff is stowed up, ready to go. With the, the style of hitch that it has, the rolling hitch, not like the normal ball hitch, um, I don't really worry about it too much, especially with people trying to seal it, because those things like are never, I've never seen one in my life other than mine, and so it's gonna be really hard for that. But we take other precautions. Um, make sure you chalk your wheels. Every, I mean, you should be doing that probably anyway. Um, go ahead and you can raise your leveling stands, your leveling jacks. Uh, because unless you're going to be in them, you won't need those down. And just having them out of the way, like put up and stored, reduces the amount of water and freezing and stuff, or the water that's going to get to it, which will cause rust. So if you can keep them up out of the way, the rust will be, it'll slow down on those. If you continually have them just down, setting out, they're, that, the weathering process is going to be a lot higher, a lot worse on them. So the last things on the exterior, making sure that you have um, all your tires taken care of, lug nuts checked. Uh, greased up on those spots if they need to. Air pressure, good. That will decrease over the winter, right? As you get colder, the air pressure inside those tires will get lower. So if you're using them, you may have to air them up a little bit more before you hit out on the road, uh, making sure all those are good. And then going through, making sure that the underside of that uh, Tiger Moth is washed out, all the mud, gunk, all the stuff that's built up on it is cleaned off so it's got a nice, clean weight for the winter. So interior wise, the biggest things uh, to worry about is just making sure everything stays dry and that there are no moisture gets built up inside your Tiger Moth. Um, so you can take some of those moisture kits or you just leave them open inside your Tiger Moth to help uh, take that just air moisture that's out of that water vapor, kind of reduce that so mildew doesn't build up. Um, you can also take your cushions and kind of move them to where they're not just sitting flat all winter, but um, they can be upright or even at an angle to allow airflow around them. Again, making sure that that moisture does not build up, does not cause that mildew to show up. And then just the normal cleaning, sweeping out, making sure everything's, uh, everything that you need is out of there. I usually try to make a big sweep after every trip to get all of my consumables out or things that um, I typically use inside my house or inside the camper out quickly. Um, and not just to leave it in there. There are a lot of things we've got to where we just leave in the Tiger Moth. A lot of bedding that's just for the Tiger Moth. We'll wash it, fold it, get it clean, put it back in there. Um, we'll go through and clean out all of our uh, electrical stuff and so we'll have a, typically i'll leave specific chargers in the tiger moth specific lights lamps uh, speakers things like that but we do still store them in specific spots and so just making sure that it's all cleaned out ready to go ready to go ready to stay stored 
and then moving on to all the electrical stuff. And so again, with the Tiger Moth, there's no plumbing, and so you don't have to worry about uh, any of that freezing up on you in the winter, but you do have electrical, and you potentially have those batteries. So a big thing, if you have your batteries, uh, make sure that battery switch is turned off. Um, you at, le at least go through and unplug them, take the, um, take the connectors off of your batteries. And if you can, and this is what I would do if I wasn't uh, planning on camping enough to keep, keep leave them in the Tiger Moth, but I would actually take my batteries out and leave, put them inside somewhere, inside where it's even like more of a climate controlled and so it doesn't experience the temperature rise and, or the temperature falls and changes as much as it will outside. Um, if you have it hooked up to AC for any reason, so that shore power, uh, go ahead and unplug that. You wanna just basically put it in hibernation as you winterize this thing. And other than that, it's just, if you wanna get a cover, put it underneath something, you can. Um, I don't have a cover or do I have an area to put it underneath the shed right now where I'm gonna rent a spot out. Again, we're gonna be using it enough that I don't think we're gonna need it. But if you're really winterizing it, really putting it up for the winter and not using it, a cover is always just going to prolong the, the shade, the color, all the features on it, make them last a lot longer, a lot brighter. And then there you go. So it's not a big, crazy undertaking, right? It takes you probably maybe an hour, a couple hours, if you're doing the whole thing in one day, and then you're, and then you're done. And so going through and making sure you do all these little things to help winterize your habitat will make them last longer, make them work better longer, and just basically makes it ready for when it does get spring or when those temperatures do warm up you're just gonna just run out there grab a hold of it and get going so if you like videos like this we have a ton of other videos about this tiger moth issues we've had upgrades we've done our full kind of um how well we've, we've enjoyed about it so far uh next year we'll do a bunch more with it comes to like we've had a year now what do we do now what do we do um, so any of these Texas Tiger Moth videos, if you want to keep up with them, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the like button if you like this video. We've got a playlist with all of our other Texas ones. We'll link it up here at the top, and we will see you in the next one.